Hi guys, this is Miss Larios, and I found a wonderful book on Epic that I really want to read to you. And I want you to know that this is a true story, okay? And it's I want you to also click, I I have another link where I'm gonna show you the real picture of Trudy. Okay, so this book is called Trudy's Big Swim, and it's how Gertrude Edward swam the English Channel and took the world by storm, and it's by Sue Macy. Let's see what happens. Wind buffered the tuckaboat Alice in the rough waters of the English Channel. With each gust, the men and women on board steadied themselves be look before looking anxiously at the churning sea. They scanned the surface, and did not relax until they spied a blur of red moving rhythmically through the waves. Gertrude Irvine, in her cheerf cheerful swimming cap, was still going strong. At 7.09 that morning, Gertrude, or Trudy, had waded into the surf from a beach in France. Her goal was to swim all the way to England by crossing the waterway between them, the English Channel, at its narrowest point. The the distance measured about 21 miles on a map, but no one could swim across the channel in a straight line, changing tides and swift currents through swimmers off course, adding many miles to the journey. 200 people had tried to swim the channel before. Only five men had made it and none on their first try. They had to overcome violent storms, numbing cold, exhaustion, leg cramps, painful jellyfish stings, and ongoing fears about sharks. Trudy's trainer, Bill Burgess, had failed 12 times before succeeding. Now Trudy wanted to be the first woman to conquer the channel. England or drown is my motto, she told reporters the day before. I can never face people at home again until I had got across. Trudy was still smarting over her failed attempt, her failed ch channel attempt the previous August. She was not used to failure. At a time when female athletes were finally starting to make headlines on the sports page, the New York Times had called Trudy the greatest freestyle swimmer of her sex ever developed. She had burst into the swimming scene as a teenager in 1922, setting records in six different sprint distances in one day. In 1924, she earned one gold and two bronze medals at the Olympics. By 1925, Trudy had set 29 records in events, as short as 50 yards and as long as half a mile. That year, she also proved she could conquer longer distances, finishing a 22-mile swim from her hometown of New York City to Sandy Hook, New Jersey, in 7 hours and 11 minutes. Now Trudy battled the sweltering waves of the channel, lifting her arms high to slash through the white caps. The summer of 1926 had been unusually cold and dreary, but when she set off this morning, August 6, the sun was shining and the water was calm. Everyone was in great spirits. The grew on the illness, Trudy's father, her sister Margaret, Bill Burgess, and a few others sang along to phonograph records to encourage her the star spangled banner let me call you sweetheart the sidewalls of new york trudy swam to the rhythm of the songs and joined in during breaks to rest and eat the rules forbade channel swimmers from touching boats or other people during their crossings so food was delivered from the outlets in a net at the end of a pole Trudy treaded water as she drank chicken broth from a baby bottle and gnawed on a leg of fried chicken but around noon, while Trudy was eating, the wind picked up and the water became choppy. Conditions only grew worse as the afternoon roared on. Trudy had to dodge chunks of driftwood stirred up by the current, along with slimy, poisonous jellyfish hurled at her by the waves. By 6 p.m., Bill Burgess began to fear that she would be injured if she kept swimming. Others aboard that illness grew worried, too. Finally, someone shouted, Come on, girl, come out! But Trudy, who was as determined as ever to finish, yelled back, What for? Her response set off a round of cheers. Trudy originally planned to swim to the British town of Dover, but at about 7.15 p.m., the tide started dragging her in the opposite direction. It's very difficult 
when I get close to Dover, she last remembered. I felt as if the sea were pulling me right away from England. Burgess quickly readjusted Trudy's course and told her to head northeast to the village of Kingsdown. That would add five miles to the trip. Despite the setback, Trudy continued swimming. By now, she had been in the water more than 12 hours. The coats of grease she had slathered on her body to keep warm had worn off. She was freezing and so very tired. As the sky grew dark, Trudy began to wonder if she could fail to accomplish her goal again. She called out to the Alnus to ask if the crew thought she could make it. Assured, they yelled back. They were certain she could. Not long after that, Trudy began to see bursts of red and green in the distance. News of her approach had spread along the coast north of Dover, and thousands of people had come out to greet her. Lightning, bonfires, and colorful flares. Those with automobiles directed their hair headlights out to the sea. A searchlight scanned the water, settling on the Alnus and the lone figure who propelled herself through the waves below. That figure continued to draw close until finally, at 9.48 p.m., Gertrude Eldine rose out of the water and stood on the English shore just north of Kingston Beach. She had crossed the channel in 14 hours and 39 minutes. Not only was she the first woman to complete the swim, she also beat the record of the fastest man by close to two hours. After spending so long in a cocoon of water, Trudy needed a moment to adjust to solid ground. But swarms of well-wishers descended on her, reaching out to shake her hand or pat her on the back. Trudy started to panic and was relieved when her father and sister came on shore and directed her to a rowboat. She climbed in quickly and returned to the quiet calm of the Alsace. As the Alsace headed to Dover, newspapers around the world rewrote the lead stories for their next editions. The channel conquered by a girl, screamed the front page of a British daily. One of the greatest athletic achievements of all time, declared a German tabloid. Trudy left it to others to consider the meaning of her success. She made her way to Dover Grand Hotel, where she scarfed down four ham sandwiches and some juicy fresh tomatoes. She took a long hot bath and crawled into a bed, crawled into bed for a well-earned rest. So, this is a true story, a great story. On this slide, you will find um, the real video or uh, real pictures of her, and you're also going to find a directed drawing of her. So let's celebrate Women's History Month with a bang. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>